Against the Current is sponsored in part by SurfPro of Pulaski and Laurel Counties. When fire or water damage takes over your life, trust the team in green at SurfPro to help you make it like it never even happened. They provide 24-7 service when you need it most. Give the local office a call at 606-877-2160 or online at surfpropulaskilaurelcounties.com. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Today I'm joined by Greg Gober, the regional director for Southeast Kentucky Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Greg, you can visit. Area Eight. director. Okay. Is it a 16 county territory? Is that right? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. Okay. Greg and his wife, Mary Lee, live here in Somerset. Kids have all grown up and moved out and got married. And Greg will be first to tell you I'm his favorite son in law. So they do have their. Stretching it just a little bit, but, you know. Yeah. They do We're working. Their... Yeah, working on it still. They do have their princess, Lucy, a little Maltese that rules the house for them. I'd say yep. Greg's probably third in command in that household. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Greg, I don't want to sell short anything on 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 what it is that the the uh, the mission is there at Fellowship of Christian Athletes and, and what all you do and all the area you cover. So I gave a very high level thirty thousand foot view of FCA. So for those that maybe aren't aware of FCA, don't really know what all FCA does, will you just kind of go for a few minutes here and kind of clue everybody in on? A little bit more on FCA. Okay, well, um, FCA has been around since 1954. Um, it was started by a man named Don McLennan. He saw a group of athletes that were huddled together and praying, and they also he also saw a young person uh, standing back from the huddle uh, watching these athletes pray. And God put it on his heart at that point to start a ministry uh, that um, mainly um, reached out to coaches and athletes and challenged them to use their influence uh, for Christ, the platform that God had given them. And since 1954, um, that's what the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been doing. Uh, it's an awesome ministry. Uh, it's a non-denominational ministry, and people can go online if they want to know more about FCA. Just go to fca.org, and you can find out everything that you want to know on uh, about FCA, um, statement of faith, uh, our statement of faith, and and all of our values. Our vision is to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. And we believe that. Um, Coaches have a huge influence on their athletes, and we hope that they use that influence for more than just physical uh, and mental training, but also for spiritual training. And uh, that's FCA kind of helps provide uh, some of that spiritual training for these athletes and, uh, and coaches. And then our mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship uh, with Jesus Christ and his church. Uh, one of the things that we say in FCA is a lot is we want to influence the influencers. So we believe that coaches can influence many people uh, with the platform that God's given them. And we also believe that athletes can influence many people with the platform that God's given them. So we want them to use that influence for Christ. And uh, uh, so we do a lot with teams and, and coaches in the 16 county area that we serve. Uh, but FCA is all over the state of Kentucky and all throughout the United States. And, you know, I feel blessed. I've been doing this for 16 years now. Uh, Adam and God has really blessed me and given me this opportunity uh, to just share the good news. That's I feel like when I started this ministry or started with this ministry that God, the mandate God gave me was just expose them to the gospel, expose them to the good news. And that's what I try to do with coaches and with athletes is just expose them to the good news of Jesus Christ. That was going to be a next question I had was how long you've been here in this position with, with, with FCA here locally. I know one thing I've seen um, you do a lot too is a lot of times you help set up, is it, I guess, maybe team chaplains throughout the different high schools because obviously you can't cover all 16 counties at once. So you try and help coordinate team chaplains kind of throughout the schools and throughout the different sports teams to, I guess, is it maybe kind of like huddles with them or what's kind of a little bit about what they do too? Yeah, we have a lot of team chaplains. I'm thinking we, uh, the last time I counted, we, we have about right at 50. Uh, okay. But they go, uh, they go to teams and um, 
they do a devotion with them, a weekly devotion. Uh, a lot of youth pastors uh, do this for us and a lot of just lay people, but they'll go in once a week and say, for instance, if, if you were the, were the chaplain for a local football team, you would go in once a week and you would share devotion uh, with that football team and just kind of be there to provide spiritual support for, uh, for that team and for those coaches. Um, it's been a real effective ministry. And uh, I think that uh, we've seen a lot of fruit from, from our team chaplain ministry. Uh, and I, it's something that's probably grown faster than any part of our ministry in, in FCA is our, is our team chaplain ministry. So if you're out there and you would like to serve as a team chaplain, uh, just let me know. Call me, email me, whatever. Uh, if you have a heart for sharing with, uh, with athletes and going in to a locker room or to a field, mainly with COVID going on right now, we're out on, on the fields. Uh, spoke to quite a few football teams here lately, and you just got on the field and share a 15-minute devotion with a team uh, once a week. And that's uh, during the season, and that's pretty much what a team chaplain consists of. Uh, so if you have a heart uh, for that and think that may be something that God might want you to do, please reach out to me. We'd love to have a few more volunteers to cover a few more teams. There's a lot of teams out there. No doubt about it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say COVID has obviously kind of dealt its own, just like it's kind of influenced the, the rest of every other industry around us. It, it does for you all as well. Uh, another big thing I've seen is just in helping with the, the Lake Cumberland Holiday Hoops basketball tournaments here a lot is, you all get the chance to, to speak not only to teams from here, but where that brings teams from different states, different parts of the Kentucky, I mean, all over that, that brings teams down here. And, and you all are able to, through help with Greg Farmer Ministries, able to uh, distribute Bibles, athlete Bibles, and, and coaches' Bibles to them as well. I know I have one of those athlete Bibles that's a great devotional, especially for anybody that is even more sports focused a little bit. I mean, that devotion really helps you take uh, a sports mindset and, and a get a, a biblical view of a lot of that as well to help better apply that to life. Yeah, that's, uh, I think the, the competitor's Bible and the coach's Bible are two big assets uh, to our ministry. They do have devotions in the back. In the back of the competitor's Bible, devotions are written by athletes, and in the back of the coach's Bible, uh, there's a daily devotional written by coaches, uh, which they're very short uh, to the point, and uh, coaches love them. Athletes love them. As a matter of fact, I had an athlete walk in my office yesterday and say, this, I love this Bible, this, this athlete's Bible that you've given me because uh, I get to do devotions with my team. And I kind of felt inadequate doing it myself, but I get to, to re I just read these uh, devotions right out of the back of the Bible and they, they have an athletic focus, but they're all uh, obviously uh, tied to the Bible and scripture. And um, he just said it's really helped me be uh, more of a spiritual leader to my team. So I do these devotions from the back of this with my team each week. Uh, so that makes you feel good when. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. When you can help somebody uh, be a leader. And that's what making disciples is all about. And I think, uh, you know, once people get saved, then they need to be discipled. And this is one way that we can help do that. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. It, uh, and, I, and I don't want to, obviously, I don't want to sell short. Anything you all do and the mission you all have as well, but a big reason, obviously, we're we're here today is we want to talk about a, an event that's coming up on Thanksgiving. Um, so I want to go ahead and switch gears to that, so we can go on ahead and get the get the word out about the event and get people signing up for those that that are in need of a meal and and for those that maybe feel compelled to, to donate or to give as well, they can they can do that too. So I'm gonna let you give a rundown of kind of the history of, of what's led up to this event and how long it's been going, how it got started, that kind of um, deal as well. Okay. Well, you know how it is. You you uh you don't want to give your son-in-law too much credit, but every now and then you have to, I guess. And uh, since this is your podcast, I guess I better give you a little credit. But, <laughs> um, but thanks for having me on and doing this, Adam. It's been uh, been great. Uh, I've been I've really enjoyed listening to some of the other podcasts and just learning more about uh, our community and about uh, some of the business leaders and businesses in the community and uh, how they got started. And all it's very interesting to me. And I appreciate you doing that. But uh, and thanks for having me on. I guess I was probably you were probably running out of people to uh, to get on there. On. <laughs> well, I had to start I at the bottom of the barrel to find you to get you on here. 
Yeah, Adam said, uh, if you want me to be nice to your daughter and your grand and your grandsons, you better uh, 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 join me on my podcast today. So yeah, I had to do it. But, uh, you know, the best part might be now I actually have you on video and audio recorded of you actually saying some several nice things about me. So I've got that forever now. Yeah, you probably better hold on to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, actually, um, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes looks looks for different ways to minister uh, to people. And you know, ministry at the end of the end of the day is just you, seeing the need and then and then being able to meet that need if you can. And um, Wayne County High School actually started this many many years ago. I've been. Uh, on staff for 16 years. So I'd say they've been doing their Thanksgiving ministry for 20 years now. And um, I started going down there every Thanksgiving and they would put together a nice meal. They'd get food donated from the community, put together a nice meal and, and give that to needy families in the community. And they were running about 800 meals on Thanksgiving day mm -hmm. uh, to needy, to needy families and needy people in the community. And the, the, the kids in the school were giving those and the students were giving those meals uh, to the people. They helped put the meals together and they were giving the meals uh, to those families and also praying with them. Um, and I know that uh, I took you with me down there one Thanksgiving day. And I think that God put it on your heart to uh, for us to do that here. And so we started talking about that. And that's really how this ministry started. Uh, back in 2016, I guess was the first year that we did uh, a Thanksgiving meal in Somerset. And we've been going since uh, this will be our fifth year now. And um, actually, I feel like that God put it on your heart at just the right time because there was a, a church that was having a Thanksgiving uh, meal at their church for the community and for people in need. But uh, they'd stopped doing that. And when we looked into it, there was no other Thanksgiving ministry. So we thought, well, maybe this is something that God wants us to do. So with the help of, um, uh, you know, some prayer and the help of people in the community and talking to uh, FCA students and athletes, they decided this is something we want to try to do and started doing it back in 2016 and been doing it ever since. Like I said, this will be the fifth year. We're excited about it again this year. And. Talk about the growth of it. I know, I mean, like you mentioned, that Wayne County started with, and they've been doing it for years. I know I've heard many stories of you taking Morgan and, and Taylor down there as well, and how it how it touched them as, as students and young kids. How has how has it grown from 2016 and the first year to, to year five? How how many I guess maybe meals have been served, people volunteered that that kind of thing. Well, the first year um, we had planned on doing about 300 meals. Yeah. Uh, we really didn't know what kind of uh, uh, need we would have. We really didn't know for sure how many meals we needed to prepare. Uh, but we uh, we had come up with 300 ballpark, 300, 400 meals. But well, we ended up doing 600 meals that first year. And, and it's amazing to see what God does because every year, and you can attest to this, mm -hmm much every year we've seen God do a miracle with uh, with this ministry uh, whether it be we don't have enough food where are we going to get this extra food and it just show up or whether that be you know a family that just uh, uh, just blesses you in some way that then lets you know that wow without this Thanksgiving meal you know our family probably wouldn't have been able to, to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving together and and just Blessing after blessing every year. It's amazing. But we went from 600 meals the first year to last year. We did. We had 2,200 people sign up for meals. Uh, so that's a pretty big increase in five years. Um, but I don't know what we'll do this year, but I'm, I'm thinking we're kind of planning on around the, the 2,000 range. But it may be, you know, it may end up being more than that. But um, each year we... Uh, uh, are just thankful to be able to serve more people. Uh, we want to try to make people's Thanksgiving a, a little bit better. Um, and if we can do that and share, share the love of Christ along with giving somebody a warm meal, uh, then th that's our goal. Uh, we just want them to know that Jesus loves them and that uh, uh, we're here to help serve them in, on this Thanksgiving day. And it's, it's, it's really been a blessing to see how much it's grown over the years. It has, and I think 
obviously a, a goal would probably be that this this meal service that, that this wouldn't be needed that everybody would have a, a warm safe place to, to be on thanksgiving and family and, a, and that warm meal but that's one of those things too where if there is a need there and it's something that we can help take care of and that god provides for that i think it's it's our duty to keep providing that as long as we can um and it's obviously it's it's a this event doesn't happen without the tremendous support of the schools, without mm-hmm. the community, and those that step up what seems like more and more every single year and without hesitation. And I'll yeah. let you give thanks to thanks to all those that in the community and, and the those donors too that, that help make this event happen. Okay. Well, and the way this thing kind of works uh, for the people that are wondering is we have people sign up each year. Uh, that that need need a uh, that need a meal and they can sign they, up. Yeah, they sign up through God's Food Pantry every year. Yeah. Yeah. They sign up through God's Food Pantry every year, and this this year the sign ups is going to be November the ninth through the twentieth. Um, so if you know a family in need, um, have them go by God's Food Pantry and sign up, and uh, that way that just gives us an idea of how many people may come through and how many need how much food we're going to need. Uh, but really, you know this. This ministry is about uh, teaching young people to serve. Uh, we have kids that, that come and that are involved in our FCAs in the schools, and they uh, help prepare the meals. They help uh, put stuff in bags. They help put uh, – uh, we, we always have some, some literature, uh, a track, a gospel track, or something that we give along with the meal. Uh, just to let them, you know, just to let them know that 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 Jesus loves them and that uh, we're we're here to serve them. Um, so the kids get to play a big part in that, and the kids also get to pray with each one of these families. And to hear some of the families talk about just these young people praying with them is amazing uh, in itself. But it helps these young people grow and to see that there are people out there in need, and and it makes them feel better about serving somebody that is in need. Uh, and I think if you teach young people to serve at a young age, then that'll go a long way in helping them in their walk with Christ and, uh, and helping their fellow man. And uh, obviously, that's what that's what Christ told us to do. Jesus said he didn't. He said, I didn't come to be served, but I came I came to serve. Uh, so he wants us to be servants. And this is one way that we can do that and help our young people um, grow as a servant. Uh, but this is not possible. Uh, without the help of a lot of people in our community. And when we, when we were praying about this ministry and talking about it, we thought, well, we want to be downtown and where people can walk, be within walking distance to come and receive their meal. So we have it each year at Somerset High School in the cafeteria. Uh, Mr. Lively, the superintendent, and Mr. Wesley have been so supportive. And we just want to thank Somerset and these people for uh, just uh, receiving us with open arms, uh, Lisa, the kitchen manager, and uh, and many others help us there at SHS, and, uh, and we're just very grateful for them and for them opening their doors to, to allow us to do, do it there in their cafeteria. Um, Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital has been a huge supporter of this ministry, and we want to thank them. Uh, they give us, I couldn't tell you how many turkeys each year uh, to make sure that we have plenty of turkey and and other supplies too. They just they just bend up backwards to, to help us in any way that they can. Um, in our uh, new life industries has been a huge support uh, to us as well. Uh, they uh, serve and help provide with uh, any anything that we need as far as uh, um, resources and supplies. Uh, you know, their boxes, you name it, and they're always there. And I think, you know, New Life is uh, somebody that we really want to thank. Modern Catering is also a huge uh, supporter of us. They help us with uh, cooking turkeys and keeping food warm and and just anything we ask of them. They, they've always been so supportive. And um, one of the miracles that I was talking about was that uh, last year, we were uh, short, it might, or maybe in the year before last, but anyway, we were going to be short on turkeys, and we figured up. I guess I figured it up wrong. I don't know, but anyway, we were gonna, definitely going to be short on turkeys. So, I uh, just happened to call Jared Richardson at at Modern and said, "Hey, we're going to be short on turkeys. Is there anything, any way that that you can help us out?" And 
Um, it just so happened that they had two big uh, catering events and they had turkey left over and it was just the right amount of turkey that we needed uh, to finish up all of our meals. So uh, uh, Modern Catering has been a huge, huge supporter and we want to thank them. Uh, Good Samaritan in Burnside, we partner with them each year and um, they uh, uh, feed people in Burnside. Actually, we are, our feeding starts at we usually start at around 11 and we end up at around 12 uh, as far as giving, handing the food out to people. And then after that, in the afternoon at Good Samaritan in Burnside, they, uh, we give meals to them each year. I think we sent 500 meals down there to them that they could give out to the people in, in Burnside. Uh, so they're a partner of ours as well. And we want to thank them. First Baptist church has been a big supporter. They help us with water each year and, and um, and volunteers and we appreciate them so much uh, also god's food pantry um uh, miss brenda helps us in any way that she can if we need uh paper supplies anything like that she always uh helps provide that for us and then she also provides the service for people who can sign up there um to receive their thanksgiving meal so god's food pantry is a big part of what we do and then prairie farms also is uh, and has given us milk in the past and we are very appreciative of that and we try to, to uh, serve water and milk to uh, to everybody that we can um, so and there's other people that i'm forgetting that i'm uh, we can just say you're getting old we, we can let you forget yes i am uh, <laughs> yes i am getting old so i uh, apologize for that you can tell by this uh, white hair on my head that I, <laughs> I don't think is as good as I used to, but uh, maybe I never did think good. I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I just want to say thanks so much to all these people. And, uh, and, you know, I think they're all on board again this year. And we're excited about uh, doing the ministry again this year. Uh, things will look a little bit different. We'll have to take a lot more precautions and use masks and social distancing and all that. But, you know, our meals are in a container and we just hand them to the people and pray with them and they take those meals home they don't eat there at the school uh, right. the school is mainly just just there to uh, uh, help us cook the food and prepare it and get it ready and then hand it to the people as they as they go home and then obviously uh, have the opportunity to pray with them so right yeah and something too there you mentioned about team modern one thing that they another thing they always want to help with is they are going to help us set up a uh, I think it's either maybe three or four pretty much large tents um, outside of right mm -hmm. outside of the cafeteria there at Somerset High School to essentially make this a drive through meal this year. That way we can try and follow the social distancing guidelines and keep people safe uh, as possible for this. So yeah. a big thank you to them, obviously, for that. So that'll be a little bit different. Obviously, in years past, people have come into school and we've done more of a kind of a, a walk through line buffet, not really a buffet type line because we always hand the the package meals to them, but this will obviously be a, an extra effort to try and keep everyone safe. Yeah. And we want people to know we serve a great meal. Uh, yeah. Turkey dressing, mashed potatoes, green beans, uh, a roll, uh, dessert. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a great meal. It's not uh, anything we really skimp on. So we want people to know that we are, uh, we're wanting to serve these people just like they were our family because uh, in, in, in essence, uh, you know, if you're a believer, then, then we're all one big family and uh, we want to serve people. And mainly, you know, the main goal of this is just to let them know that Jesus loves them. Uh, that's, that's the message we want to get out. And that's what FCA is all about. And uh, this is a great way that we can, uh, that we can serve people and also tell them about Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, another thing too, I want to point out just, I know obviously we talking about Somerset high school and we do have it there every year and they're always, incredibly supportive and always wants to have have it there there have been a couple instances where we thought had a little bit of doubt whether it was construction going on at the Somerset high school cafeteria a couple years ago and i and obviously with COVID this year that we have in the past reached out to to mr cook and mr richardson there at at Pulaski county schools and they have always been equally as supportive as Somerset high school so it's obviously we're not showing any favoritism anywhere but i do want to, want to make it known that that all schools are always very supportive of this event Yes. Students from FCAs at, at all the schools are always very supportive. I, mean, heck, I think we've had one or two years where kids from even like Russell County or, or other county schools have come over to help as well. So 
Yes, we've had students from Russell County, from Casey County, and from uh, uh, Rockcastle County that have came yeah. over and a part of what we're doing and brought and their families have came with them. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a uh, a regional thing, I guess. Uh, and we're just glad that word's getting out and that uh, people will give up their day. I, I hadn't mentioned this. I want I don't want people to think that we're pulling kids and people away from their families on Thanksgiving. Most of the food is prepared uh, before Thanksgiving Day, but then we come in Thanksgiving morning. We come in early that morning and, and get the rest of the meal uh, prepared, and then we finish up. We're finished up every year by noon, uh, mm -hmm. where. The kids and all the volunteers can go home and be with their family and celebrate uh, Thanksgiving with their family. And so we want to make sure that that everybody gets home and gets to be a part of the of their family uh, Thanksgiving as well. Absolutely. Well, Greg, I want to be respectful of your time, and but I'll try and I'll try and give a quick rundown, kind of of the who, what, when, where of the event, and I'm sure I'm going to leave something out or forget something. So just jump in and, and tell your son-in-law he screwed up, and, and then you can. Fill me in on what I left out. <laughs> Sound good? I love to tell him that. I don't get to tell yeah. him that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, kind of a rundown. This is a, a Thanksgiving meal um, through FCA. FCA helps put this on every year. It is on Thanksgiving Day. There are two pickup locations. So, for those that are in need of those, those that are those that are in need of a meal and want to sign up for a meal for their family, you will need to go through God's Food Pantry between the 9th and the twentieth. You said right. Yes. Okay. November. And then, okay. And you can let them know when you sign up if you would prefer to pick your meal up at Somerset High School or if you prefer to pick it up at Good Samaritan down at Burnside. Mm -hmm. um, I know I think it seems like kind of the breakdown usually about two thirds of the meals that we prepare are picked up at Somerset and about a third of the meals uh, down at Burnside. So it is good. A big thank you to, to Good Samaritan and Burnside for helping us put together and organize a second location for that so we can try and be a, a broader help to the to the community um, and if any don't know where good samaritan is it's in burnside it's right across from reno's uh, yep. in the in the flea market there uh, yep. it's where it's located um if you have a a high school if you're a high school student listening to this or if you have a high school or no one that, that may want to help with this have them reach out to who should they reach out to at their schools to sign up to volunteer uh, what well, they can reach out with their FCA director at their school, or they okay. can call me. They can call me directly, um, okay. and I'm sure you'll post my. Um, I will. Cell number there on the um, and and let people know what that is. But yeah, uh, they can do if they prefer to call me, call me or text me anytime, and that's okay. uh, probably the best way to do it. Right. Okay. I know in years past we've had with the different schools a lot of times the FCA director will take up. A list of names and, and numbers for people that way if that way they can kind of volunteer and sign up and uh, contract tracing to have everybody set up and kind of take care of that precaution too mm -hmm. um running through here um it, so if someone this is one a lot of times with events people are always seeing volunteers always needing help this year i guess maybe even more so we're we actually don't really need volunteers which is kind of weird to say it's mm -hmm. Obviously, for youth, if you can volunteer, great. We'd love to have you and help get you involved with this event. Um, but for the most part, too, a, a big thing with this event last year, like you said, we had 2,200 registered, and we are able to make that many meals, I think, with less than $2,000, which mm -hmm. is incredible to make a full Thanksgiving meal with turkey, dressing, turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, vegetable, dessert, drink, all that for less than a dollar. Yeah. Um, so a big thing I know we at, or you ask as well is, if people feel led, feel led to give, that, that they can't do so. And so what I'm going to do is I'll have a a link that I'll post in the comments, um, in the show notes, wherever you're listening or watching this to, that'll be to your, it's like my FCA something slash Greg Gover pretty much. I, I know something like that. I'll get the specifics on there. But I know when they give to that, they would, that's able to give directly to you and it helps impact here locally, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, and of course, obviously, if they want to give you a check or give you money as well, it's obviously it's also a 501c3 nonprofit donation too. So, yes, everything's tax deductible. And uh, for those people that don't know, our ministry is totally funded. By, I mean, FCA doesn't doesn't pay us anything. We don't get any money from them. It's uh, everything 
uh, is just donors like businesses and individuals uh, that want to give and they want to see us uh, sharing Christ in our schools uh, and doing things like this uh, without the support of of businesses and individuals you know we don't exist so uh, we're very thankful for all of our donors and if you want to be, be a part of this ministry uh, be a part of this thanksgiving ministry uh, please uh, uh, just give us a donation and we'll put it to good use uh, we want to uh, want to make sure this keeps going uh, every year and and even gets bigger uh, each year and to do that it takes money um, I'm not here begging for money, but like you said, we have so many great donors. We do keep our costs down to just right. imagine feeding that many people for $2,000. is pretty amazing. Um, so that just tells you how much we are actually getting donated because it actually costs a whole lot more than that. But, um, oh, yeah. but the community just kind of wrapped its arms around this event and, mm-hmm. um, and said, Hey, we, we, we want to help. And, uh, so if you can help in any way, can you pray about it and uh, send us a gift and we'll use it to help feed people. Absolutely. And I think too, on that online site, I think you're able to do maybe either a one-time gift or recurring monthly donation, kind of whatever works best. So but that'll be in the notes so people can do that as well. Is there anything else that I've left out or anything else you want people to know about the event, FCA, whatever you, you'd like to share? Um. Just the fact that, um, you know, we talked about coaches and athletes using their influence influence for Christ. And uh, a great uh, pastor died not too long ago uh, named Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said that a coach impacts more lives in one year than the average person does in a lifetime. Billy Graham was a great supporter of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, he, be- he believes in what we're doing. and um, a statistic that kind of blows people away when I share this with them is anywhere from 75 to 80 percent of kids that go to public schools are unchurched. This is a way that we can take the church to the school and tell them about Christ. Uh, so thank you for helping us do that. Uh, it takes uh, it takes a lot of people that really are concerned about uh, about our kids and. Uh, they're the future. They're our future, obviously, and we want to make sure that more of them are church than uh, than are going to church right now. And to think that seventy-five to eighty percent of the kids that are in our public schools are unchurched is just—it's uh, something that you you wouldn't believe it until you actually went in the schools and walked up and down the hallways and and um, and talked to kids about church and about spiritual things. Uh, we need to do a better job, and we will do a better job. I'm trying, we're trying to hire more people and get more people in the schools to uh, to help, and, and God's been just blessing us uh, tremendously with that, so I'm very thankful. We do serve a 16-county area. That's a big area uh, to cover in a lot of schools, uh, but we're doing the best we can, and, and God is helping us, and, you know, I can say that I have get the – have got to see many, many young people give their hearts to Christ. And that's, that's the bottom line. You know, Matthew 16, 26 says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but loses his soul? Um, we just want people uh, to know about Christ and have the opportunity to either accept him or reject him as their Lord and Savior. You know, our, our job is to spread the gospel and that's what we're trying to do in SCA. So thank you for your consideration. And uh, if you want to help in any way, you can, Contact me anytime with any questions. Uh, I'd be glad to sit down and talk to you. Taking us to church is a a good way to end it. I love it. Good job. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Like I said, I'm going to have everything in the notes. If you feel led to give to this ministry, to to this event in particular, whichever you feel led to do, I'll I'll have notes on there and then easy links for you to be able to, to do that. Um, If there are other ways you'd like to support the event, please reach out as well. If you know someone that may be in need uh, of a meal this Thanksgiving, please let, please let encourage them to to contact and go buy God's food pantry sometime between the 9th and the 20th and get them signed up for this because we don't want to leave anyone out of this event that that needs that meal and and can, can really appreciate and and benefit from that meal. So Greg, thank you again for for taking the time to to do this and and for all you do for for our youth and for our community and um, our region, obviously with 16 counties. So, Thank you, Adam.
I appreciate it.